So let's now turn to the question of cyber stalking. And to set up this discussion, I want to show you a, a brief video clip of ways in which someone could be engaged in cyber stalking. Uh, you'll notice in this clip uh, someone named uh, Tim Ryan. He's a former FBI agent, uh, used to run the FBI's cyber unit in Newark. He's a friend of mine. Uh, and he happens to appear in in this video. So I'll show you this video and then we'll come back and talk about it Symphony Diaz Yeah, no way Jason uh... We met at the Wranglers hockey game you were with Brad your boyfriend, right? Yeah How do I know Symphony Diaz? I don't but thanks to Facebook and Foursquare Crime Watch Daily has uncovered intimate details of her life a realization that quickly freaks her out. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. I'm Jason Matera with Crime Watch Daily. Hi. And here's the really scary part. As soon as you check in on social media and pinpoint your exact location, you turn into an instant target for cyber stalkers. That was creepy. I'm like shaking right now. Oh my gosh, that scared me so bad. We set up stings in Las Vegas and New York City. And over the course of two days, watch for people checking in on social media at both of the Buca de Beppo restaurants. They're showing their family members right here. Tim Ryan, a former FBI agent and cybersecurity expert, then went to work probing their private information. It took him no time to find out Symphony likely lives alone in an apartment and watches TV by herself at night. Does that freak you out? It freaks me out a lot. Like, that's not... That's not something I like. It gets worse. Angela, Angela Alfiona? Yes. You worked at when? I did. Jason, you remember me? No, but I worked with so many people over there. I wonder if Angela's son, who's away at college, knows as much about his mom's past as I do. Does uh, Forrest know what you used to do? Uh, yeah, if Forrest wants to get into IT. Does Forrest know about your time? My time? As a stripper? Or as applying a... for a stripper? I don't Does remember applying for a stripper. No? What profile? You have any uh, tattoos besides the one on your chest and your hip? No. Just those two? Uh-huh. Did you ever work as a stripper? No. No, then what's no. the stripper profile for? What What stripper profile? That's what I'm talking about. You don't know the stripper profile? No. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> News to I, me. I, look, I got it right here, too. Right here. Oh, yeah, somebody stole my <laughs> That's an old picture. Yeah. I was 30 in that picture. That's were, seven years ago. You were 30, so did you ever get the stripper job? I didn't do a stripper job. So they just, what, uploaded this? Somebody stole that. That's, yeah. What's this for? Is there any way you can email me this? Waitress! So somebody took your pictures from the internet. They had to. Posted it on a, yeah. a, on a strip club job site, and they even knew about the tattoos you have. They, heck, I even knew that Forrest was your son going to Central Oregon that Community College. That is so College. scary. What site is that? Jason Matera with... Crime Watch Daily. Oh, nice to and meet you've you. You've just been cyber stalked. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, apparently I've been caught. The fact that we were able to do that so effortlessly, will it make you reconsider what you tag as public information on Facebook? Yes, actually. You have no idea the changes that are about to occur as soon as I leave here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And here's a shocking stat 87% of all cyber stalkings target college age women. Like Molly. Molly? Yes? Jason, we met Springfield. She's a young actress from Oklahoma, low hanging fruit for a digital deviant. Are you nervous being at home alone while Dan is gone? I mean, you know, it's, uh. Are these all. I, yeah, no, I'm okay. I'm okay with that thing. You curious how I know all of this about you? Yeah! Well, I'll tell you what. I'm Jason Matera. Okay. Time Watch Daily. Okay. And you then cyberstalk. Luckily for Molly, Tim Ryan has some helpful tips to avoid a stalker's trap. What well, you saw Jason do right there, that's exactly what a stalker is going to do. Mm -hmm. So I know you're an actress, you have to be on social media, right. but you probably don't want to tell everybody everything. Mm -hmm. So creating little groups, creating lists of people that can see stuff and other people that can't, that's pretty important. Right? You don't want that guy, the creepy guy who lives across the street or downstairs right. to know when Dan's gone and you're mm -hmm. home alone for a period of time. 
With 3 million cases of cyberstalking reported every year, it's important to know how to limit your exposure, especially if you're one of those who likes to bear their souls on the web. David, yes. Jason, share the same dentist, Dr. Pope. Oh, <laughs> With a quick glance at David's social media pages, Tim and I uncovered rants about his ex-wife and other posts of a highly personal nature. Are you concerned with putting a lot of private information out there to the public that uh, someone with bad motives can use that against you in any way? No, you know, I'm a very spiritual guy and I feel like God will protect me. For those without a celestial firewall, there's Tim Ryan. Here's the problem. About $70 million a year is stolen by criminals in a thing called romance fraud. Mm -hmm. So the criminals, usually from overseas, are looking for people who've experienced loss, and you've experienced some pretty significant loss. The problem is they're not going to appear as Jason. They're going to come at you as a girl. They're going to come at you as an attractive woman. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to ask you to do things for them. What do you think no, about I, that? I day? know. That's true. I have a weakness for women. If Tim's takeaways to cut your exposure to cyber stalking? Remember that the internet never forgets. What you post today will live on forever. Use privacy filters to restrict information to your closest friends and family. Avoid disclosing your location. The world doesn't need to know your home is empty. Finally, be cautious about sharing your vulnerabilities. Because the next time a stranger comes up to you, Alexander? he might not be from Crime Watch Daily. So welcome back, and it should be no surprise to all of us that given the extent of all of our online lives, if someone wants to track us down and someone wants to harass us online, they probably can do it. Now, you know, Tim uh, Ryan in that video being the con good consultant that he is, is trying to tell us to keep various things segregated in our online lives. As we talked a little bit in, in class last week about this, that can be really difficult to do. In some ways, maybe it can be impractical to do, and in some ways, maybe our social norms suggest that, uh, nowadays suggest that we don't need to do it to such an extent, but we do need to be aware that someone could come after us. And these kinds of things do happen, and they do happen regularly, and you see that in the, the cases that we've looked at. Uh, you can also see that in some news reports, and I'll put some links up on the website to some other news reports that show you some other examples, uh, if you want to watch them, of cyber bullying, cyber harassment, cyber stalking. So how does the law respond to this? We have looked uh, in some detail now at the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, and you should notice that the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act doesn't really deal with what we're calling cyber stalking. Now, it's possible that some portions of the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act could be implicated by some of the kinds of activities that we call cyber stalking. So, um, certainly if, if someone hacks into someone else's computer in order to get information, or manipulate information to engage in harassment. That also could be a violation of the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. Um, or uh, ex the extortion provision of the CFAA could be implicated, although it's not really the, the typical case that's typically for some kind of uh, you know hold up for financial gain. Um, fraud aspects of the CFAA could be implicated as well, but generally the CFAA is not designed to go after the, the kinds of harassment and stalking and threats that we're, we're trying to address um, in this lecture and, and next week as well. So we're going to talk a little bit about federal law today and we'll talk a little bit more about, about state law next week. So the federal statutes that exist, there are a number of statutes that uh, beyond the CFAA that potentially could be applied to the kind of conduct that, that we're talking about today. One of them is uh, 47 U.S.C. 223, which is titled Obscene or Harassing Telephone Calls. And as you might imagine, it was originally created in the telephone age, but it's broad enough because it talks about the use of a telecommunications device to cover some of these kinds of activities. So this is one um, possibility, and you'll see that the uh, kinds of transmissions that uh, could be implicated. A, a proposal image communication which is obscene or child pornography with the intent to annoy, abuse, threaten, or harass. 
Now, you, you, you should be thinking, as you look at these statutes, that both this week and next week, we'll talk about it a little bit this week and some more next week, um, how broad can this go and still be constitutional? Uh, think about, for example, the use of any telecommunications device to annoy somebody. Um, how often does that happen, let's say, on Facebook? If I put a post up, a sarcastic post up, about Donald Trump, because I know my brother-in-law likes Donald Trump, and I know this will annoy him, am I violating federal law? I suppose in one sense technically I could be, um, but I highly doubt that that ought to be considered a violation of federal law. So think about, and, it, and obviously that kind of conduct isn't likely to get prosecuted, but think about where the lines are. And uh, it can be hard, I think, to, to draw these lines and to figure out where we ought to draw them. Another statute that often gets applied in these kinds of cases is um, 18 U.S.C. 875C. And again, this is a uh, statute that really relates originally to kind of telephone days and you'll see that it's kind of uh, revolves around kidnapping, threat of injury, that sort of thing, but it also applies because it's, again, any transmission of inter interstate commerce of any communication, it also can apply, uh, this threat statute also can apply online. So we'll look at a few cases that deal with that. The primary statute, in, in one sense, uh, today, now, is what's formally titled the Violence Against Women Act, but also has these provisions that are, that are, that are called the Federal Cyber Stalking Law. And it's found in 18 U.S.C. 2261, capital A. So in uh, subsection two of capital A here, you see this provision. And I'm, I'm showing you this language, and then I'm gonna show you how this statute was uh, amended in 2006 specifically to address cyber issues. And then I'll show you again how the statute was amended in 2013 to try and further address cyber issues. So you'll see here, intent to kill, injure, or harass, uh, or intent to place under surveillance with the intent to kill, injure, harass, or intimidate, um, or with the intent to place a person in another state in reasonable fear uh, of the death of serious bodily injury to that person or a member of their immediate family, spouse, or intimate partner using the mail um, or any facility of interstate or foreign commerce or any interactive computer service. So you see that those definitions that include interactive computer service or any facility of interstate or foreign commerce, which certainly most uh, ISPs are going to, to be, engaging in these kind of conducts can be a violation of, of uh, this statute. Notice the requirement that the course of conduct actually cause substantial emotional distress um, to that person in reasonable fear of death uh, or serious bodily injury to that person or an immediate family member and, and so on. So there is both an intent requirement and an effect requirement, an intent to uh, injure, kill, harass, or place under surveillance with injure, kill, harass, and the effect of causing substantial emotional distress, even if the person isn't actually, you know, uh, killed or, or physically injured. Now, where was this statute amended in 2006? It was first amended to include this word harass. It had only included, it was a, sort of a traditional uh, stalking statute, and it was tried being tried to brought into the uh, digital age to include things beyond physical stalking to kill somebody. So harassment was included there, uh, or the intent simply to cause substantial emotional distress. So the idea here is this kind of uh, bullying and harassment online. And the interactive computer service was add, added. So to try and be clear that the cyber aspect of this is specifically covered and the fact that it could that it would cause substantial emotional distress, not um, simply other kinds of injury. So all these things were added to make this a statute that is dealing uh, specifically with cyber stalking. 
Now let's talk a little bit about the 2013 amendments and I'm going to uh, pull these up on the screen from Westlaw so that we can we can talk about those. So here is the current version of the statute which includes the 2013 amendments and if you look at subsection 2 you'll see some changes. Uh, the first set of changes involves the kinds of facilities uh, that if one uses them would trigger the statute. So uses the mail, any interactive computer service, we've seen that before, and uh, or any electronic communication service or electronic communication system of interstate commerce. And so these two categories I think are intended to capture email, um, social media, social media messaging platforms, and things of that nature probably interactive computer service, facility of interstate or foreign commerce would have included those already, uh, but these things are added to make clear that those sorts of uses are covered. Uh, notice then in subsections A and B, the fear of death or serious bodily injury is then broken out from the substantial emotional distress. And notice uh, what it could be potentially a significant change in, in uh, sub B there, which is causes, attempts to cause, or would be reasonably expected to cause substantial emotional distress. Now, in a moment, we'll talk about the uh, Conlin case, which is uh, one case upholding the constitutionality of this provision against a uh, claim that it unduly, is, it, that it's overly vague and that it unduly impinges on, on free speech. And there are a number of challenges like that. There's one in a district court in Maryland that in fact found the statute, the 2006 version of the statute, unconstitutional. Um, but the Conlin case upholds the constitutionality of the statute. But notice the reasoning, and a key piece of the reasoning was that the court said it's not only an intent uh, to speak in a certain way that might be offensive, but also the effect of causing substantial emotional distress when you add the effect to the intent, uh, the Conlon court said, you can c conclude that the statute is constitutional. Now, I'm not sure that reasoning is sound, at least under this version of the statute, because in subsection B, uh, it, it appears to me that it would not necessarily have to have the effect. It simply could be reasonably expected to cause substantial emotional distress, even if the speech doesn't actually cause substantial emotional distress. So there perhaps is a lingering question um, about the constitutionality of this statute. And I think that's one of the kind of underlying legal and policy issues you ought to be thinking about as we look at some of these cases that deal with cyber stalking and harassment. And then next week when we look at, uh, at bullying and other similar statutes, uh, we, we have a difficulty saying that speech that is offensive should be illegal simply because it's offensive. Uh, because after all, the First Amendment, if it protects anything, protects speech that some people find offensive. And yet, we, uh, the law wants to have some limits when it comes to these activities that we would call stalking or, or perhaps bullying and, and, and harassment. So keep those things in mind. And now we'll take a look at the Conlon case and some other cases.